As a male, you should be checking your PSA levels once a year after the age of 40. But did you know that there are certain things that can just increase your PSA levels before a test and give you a false reading? Well, I covered those things in a previous video that you can find in the description, but one of them was exercise. So is it true that exercise can increase your PSA levels? And if yes, what types of exercise increase it the most, for how long, and what you must know before doing a PSA blood test if you're also exercising? Let's look into it. Yes, it is true. Exercise will increase your PSA levels. Now, that doesn't mean we have to avoid exercise if you wanna do an accurate PSA test. What we must know is what exercises to avoid and for how long before a blood PSA test. In general, exercises that get our heart rate up and they are long in duration will also start releasing a lot of things in the blood because of the increased blood flow. We will see higher inflammation or inflammatory agents for a, a couple of hours after the exercise and also PSA will increase due to that increased blood flow. So exercise that is typically aerobic in nature, such as uh, running, riding a bike, rowing, that will get our PSA levels up. High resistance exercise where it's mostly uh, muscle work and it doesn't typically get a, our heart rate up for long periods of time is a bit more gentle on those PSA levels. So aerobic exercise would be the exercise that really affects the PSA levels for a few hours after the activity. But there is one certain characteristic that really makes a difference when it comes to spiking the PSA levels during an exercise. What is that? Well, before that, if you click like on this video, it's going to help spread it to those who need it and raise awareness. Now, the one characteristic that really makes a difference during exercise when it comes to increasing blood PSA levels is pressure on the prostate. Exercises that get pressure on the prostate tend to increase PSA levels the most. So anything that tenses the muscles around that area or continuously puts pressure on the prostate, that will spike the PSA levels. And the number one exercise that does that the most is cycling. Cycling gets your heart rate up, it, make, it is long in duration, plus, especially because the seat is narrow, it puts a lot of pressure during the prostate. And because you're cycling, there is this constant bumping up and down that pushes all those structures together and gets the blood flow in and really releases anything that is concentrated in that area. And PSA is a molecule that is on the surface of uh, prostate cells, both healthy and tumor cells. Also, if you're doing squats and you're sitting on a chair up and down, again, this pressure and the muscle work around that area is gonna affect it. But really, bicycling is by far the most impactful on PSA levels. Actually, one study from the Victorian Institute of Sport in Australia showed that in men who were 50 to 70 years old and who just completed a bit of a prolonged uh, cycling session, their PSA levels increased by 10% after the cycling. And the authors actually suggested for you to wait 24 to 48 hours after doing cycling before testing your PSA levels. But if you're doing something lighter that doesn't put a lot of pressure on the prostate, that doesn't uh, get your heart rate up for long periods of time, such as uh, lifting uh, weights or, or even doing pelvic floor muscle exercises for incontinence or sexual dysfunction, it would be okay to do it the day before. It's just cycling, you should wait at least maybe a couple of days after a strong session. Definitely, however, do not do any exercise before you do your PSA test level. Just go there, do that blood test in the morning, and then you can go and exercise. If you do it right before the test, it might affect your PSA levels and give you a false indication of what's going on with your prostate. Now, if exercise increases PSA levels in the blood, even for a few hours, let's say up to 24 hours after the exercise, 
Does that mean that every time you do exercise, you suddenly increase your risk of prostate cancer, even for 24 hours? Will that start to gradually pile up and eventually lead to prostate cancer? Before that, I wanted to let you know if you have any problems with urinary incontinence or bladder control, or you're suffering from sexual dysfunction, such as erectile dysfunction, in my website, I have an exercise medicine program for men that you can do and actually fix those problems. And if you are liking this video, you can buy me a coffee using the link in the description. So, will doing frequent exercise and spiking our PSA levels increase our risk of prostate cancer? Or if we do have prostate cancer, will it actually increase the growth of prostate cancer? Not at all. Actually, long-term exercise does not negatively affect your PSA levels. And I can link a study in the description of this video that verifies that. Actually, long-term exercise decreases the risk of prostate cancer. So that's another reason to exercise. But now you might be wondering, all right, if it does in decrease the risk of prostate cancer, what if I already have prostate cancer? Will exercise help reduce the growth of my prostate cancer? Well, that's a topic for another video that you can find in my channel. For now, let's fight cancer with exercise.